بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وقال تعالى ولنذيقنهم من العذاب الأدنى دون العذاب الأكبر لعلهم يرجعون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمتي هذه أمة مرحومة ليس عليها عذاب في الآخرة عذابها في الدنيا الزلازل والفتن والقتل أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق الرسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Many of us, we know and we've seen, uh, you know, the images and the news of our brothers and sisters who have been affected by the earthquake in Turkey, in Turkey and in Syria. And, you know, when we see these type of images and when we experience uh, such, you know, sights, you know, there's a lot of questions that come in our mind. But the underlying point to take into consideration is this Mubarak and blessed hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنْ That how amazing and how astounding and how strange is the situation of a believer. Strange in the sense that it seems like contradictory. It seems like, you know, an oxymoron that Everything that afflicts a believer, it is good for him. If difficulties come upon a believer, this is also good for him. And if ease and prosperity comes to a believer, then this is also good for him. But how is that? In If he is afflicted by good things, he is grateful. And that gratitude is a means by which he attains reward and ajr. Something good happens to a believer. Allah gives somebody good health. Allah Ta'ala gives somebody wealth. Allah gives somebody success. Allah gives somebody prosperity. And they say, Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukr. Oh Allah, thank you for your blessings. This is good for him. That gratitude is a vehicle that takes him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is good for him. This is a source of ajr for him. This is a source of connecting him to his creator. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And on the other hand, if he's afflicted by any calamity, if he's afflicted by any tribulation, is he afflicted by any sickness, if he's afflicted by any hardship, is he afflicted by any difficulty, then he has patience for the sake of his Lord. And in that is also his vehicle to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, there's two, there's two conveyances, two vehicles that will get you to Jannah. You know, like you have a vehicle, you have a bus, you have a train, you have a plane, you have horse, you have donkey, you have camel. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu said, he said, there's two markab, markaban, markabani. There's two vehicles, two conveyances that are going to get you to your Lord. Markabu sabri wa markabu shukr. The conveyance, the vehicle of patience and the vehicle of, of gratitude. He says, he says, لا أبالي أيهما ركبتو. لا أبالي أيهما ركبتو. I don't care which one that I will be riding. I know that whichever one I will ride, I will reach my destination, I will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very, very amazing 
lesson, brothers and sisters, because no human being is free of one of two conditions in this world. All of us, everyone sitting in this room, there is no third condition. There's only two conditions that we are in. We are either in good conditions or we're in bad conditions. We're either in health or in sickness. We're either in afia or we're in some bala. We're either in poverty or we are in richness. We're either in good times or we are in bad times. One, they cannot be one or the other. Sometimes some of us are in the middle, but the middle one is also good times. There is no middle. If you're in the middle, that's also good times, which you need to be grateful for. So there's only two. And for these two, a believer, Allah Ta'ala is looking at the condition of our hearts. Our external conditions, it actually supposed to bring out something from our internal condition. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings these calamities? To bring about what's inside of us. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings earthquakes and calamities and natural disasters and earthquakes and sicknesses and plagues and suffering, all of these? Because this brings out what is inside, hidden. Allah knows what is inside of us. Allah wants us to know what is inside of us. Allah knows what's in our hearts. Allah knows that we don't have patience. Allah knows that we don't have sabr. Allah knows that we are not grateful. Allah knows that we are stingy. Allah knows we have no compassion. Allah knows we are generous. Allah knows we are brave. But how does that manifest in the real world by which then Allah will reward us or Allah will punish us? How does that become manifest? You know, you have a stone a stone, you don't know if it's gold, if it's silver, if it's diamond, if it's a precious gem, so you have to polish it a little bit. You rub it, you polish it, and when you polish it, then the real preciousness or the real fakeness becomes apparent. So these calamities, these tribulations, these hardships, this is the way that Allah polishes the human beings, and then you see what is under. You see that there's generosity under that stone. You see that there is iman in that stone. You see that there is submission in that stone. You see that there is compassion. You see that there is love. You see that there is care. You see that there is concern. Otherwise, a little bit of, you know, some, some, you know, some stone may look like it's very, very precious. It's red, it's shiny, and then you polish it a little bit, and then, a, you know, black coal comes out from the bottom. Black coal comes from the bottom. Oh, he said, this wasn't gold. This wasn't silver. This wasn't diamond. This was actually something very cheap. And it is that polishing, that rubbing, that effect, that tribulation, that friction that brought about the, what's actually on the inside. This is the reality of this. Another thing, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, these tribulations are a sample of what is going to come on the day of judgment imam abu mansur al maturidi rahimahullah the great theologian he mentions that all of the enjoyments and all of the sufferings of the life of this world these are but samples of what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought about in the hereafter if there is an enjoyment in this world of this amazing feeling an ecstatic feeling. If there is a suffering in this world of a very bad feeling, pain, hardship, sickness, a burning, an irritation, if there is a, 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 you know, an elated feeling, all of these are samples of the eternal feelings of, that we will get of these same thing in the hereafter, either in Jannah or in Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about these pains and these sufferings and these enjoyments and these feelings so that we can get a sample of what is yet to come, which will be eternal then. How would a person know about the enjoyment of the pleasures of paradise if a person didn't taste the ephemeral pleasure of the life of this world? So, Whatever we see and whatever we experience, these are small, short samples. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions about the earthquake of the day of the uh, day of judgment. Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum, O mankind, fear your Lord. Be aware of your Lord 
إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم. Verily, the earthquake of the last day is a very severe matter. How severe is it? يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة أما أرضعت. The day that you will see the earthquake of that of the last day, you will see that the pregnant women they will actually abort their children. That's how a serious situation was. And in this earthquake, actually, there was a woman who was in her last stages of pregnancy. When the earthquake came, out of the pressure and the stress of that, the child was born. And that child is now safe. All of the family of that child has passed away. All its siblings, mother, father, all of them were killed. In the, all of them were shaheed, inshallah, in that earthquake. And only this child survived. They said it's having a little bit trouble breathing, but the child is stable, the child is well. Subhanallah. Just a sample of what is to come, that a mother will abort her child. And... تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ أَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every nursing mother will forget about her child. And you see the people are running in every direction. One of the scholars that we know, Sheikh Wa'il al-Hanbali, he's there in, in that region in Turkey. He just messaged one message. He said, Subhanallah. He said, These, the, the, the scenes here are like the scenes of Qiyamah. Sheikh. We know Sheikh Wa'il al-Hambali, he's in Turkey, but he was near that area where the earthquake hit, hit that place. And he said, subhanAllah, all of the, 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 what we're seeing and the scene here on the ground is like the scenes of the Day of Judgment. And why is this? Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَنُذِيقَنَّهُمْ مِّنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Allah Ta'ala shows us the lesser tribulation before the greater tribulation. As I mentioned, these are samples. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Because Allah wants us to connect back. Allah wants us to return to Him. For a believer, brothers and sisters, these situations, like I said, all of it is khair. There is no negative, there is no dismal, gloomy, uh, depressing, suffering and punishment. There is no such thing for punishment. For a believer. Maulana Ashraf Ali Tanwi Rahimahullah Hakim al Ummah. He mentioned that if a, if, a, if a believer is put through tribulation in the life of this world, it is not ta'adheeb, it is tahadheeb. It is not ta'adheeb bil ayn, it's tahadheeb bil ha. What's the difference? Ta'adheeb is somebody you're tormenting them. And this is what a lot of people, when they look at these situations, they're like, if God is so merciful, if God is so loving, if God is so kind, why does he torment? This is not tormenting. Hakim al Ummah said, he said, this is not ta'adheeb bil ayn, it's ta'adheeb bil ha. And the difference is, what is torment? You're torturing somebody. You're tormenting somebody. Does Allah torture? Does, does Allah torment? Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, brothers and sisters, listen. ما يفعل الله بعذابكم إن شكرتم وآمنتم وكان الله شاكرا عليما. Never ever let this come in your mind that why is Allah punishing? Why is Allah torturing? Allah doesn't torture and Allah doesn't punish. Look at the words that Allah is saying. ما يفعل الله بعذابكم. What does Allah benefit from punishing you? Tell me. This is the words of Allah in the Quran. In shakartum wa amantum, if you are grateful and if you have faith, why does Allah Ta'ala need to do this? Because there's another there's another reason behind this. Because Allah wants us to rectify ourselves. Allah wants us to return to Him. Allah wants us to prepare ourselves for the everlasting. SubhanAllah, they were in, in, in those same places, you know, in the may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. We should never ever say that these things are punishment upon those people. These people committed sin. This is a punishment on them. Brothers and sisters, are we any better than anyone else? Are we not deserving of punishment? Let us not say this. Allah knows His slaves. Does he not know who he created? And he is the most subtle and aware of his servants. We should not say that he is the one. He did this because they deserved some punishment. 
We don't we have we are in no place to play God. We are in no place to judge. Could this happen because they were doing something or that? This is none of our business. We are probably doing a thousand things which demand Allah Ta'ala's punishment and retribution. We are in no place to say such and such people were deserving and such and such people are not deserving. Allah Azza wa knows His slaves and Allah knows out of His divine wisdom what He brought upon whom. But we are not in any position to say this, oh, this happened in that place because there was a specific punishment that they were deserving of. Whatever it is, for those who are living, for those who are living and who survived, subhanAllah, this is for them a purification. This is for them an atonement. This is for them an elevation. Kafaratul dhunub wa raf'ud darajat, insha'Allah. And for those believers who have passed away, it is shahada, it is martyrdom, insha'Allah. So what is the, where, is the, where is the harm in this? Where is the negative in this? For those who lived, inshallah, it is a kafara and it is an elevation of their status and maqam. It is sabr and ajr for those who lived. And for those who passed away, subhanallah, it is shahada and it is high ranks in paradise and the pleasure of their Lord. Jannatun bighayri hisabin wala kitab. It is paradise without reckoning. This is the maqam of a believer. Ajaban li amri al-mu'min. Inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. This is why it's ajab. This is why it's astounding. This is why it's amazing. Because every situation for a believer is khair. So brothers and sisters, let's not fall into negativity. These type of powerful images. Yes, they're very powerful. Seeing people crushed under buildings. Seeing these buildings fall. Seeing these very, very serious, you know, you know, uh, powerful images, it, it can be really difficult when a person looks upon it. But we must remind ourselves to look at things from the lens of the Quran and the Sunnah. To look at things from the lens of the Quran and Sunnah. What we see from the external, right, is something else. And what is hidden in the internal reality of it, that is in the wisdom of our Lord. Allah Ta'ala is Hakim and He is Hakim. Mawlana Tanwi Rahmatullahi said, Allah Azza wa Jal is Hakim. He is the ultimate judge. He knows where to send what. He knows how to deal with his slaves and how he deals with them and how he intervenes in his creation. He is Hakim. He is the absolute judge. He is the absolute sovereign who knows how to deal with his creation. We are in no place to say, these people were worthy of punishment and these people are worthy of mercy. Why did God do this? Why did... You don't ask the judge. He is the ultimate hakim. Alaysa Allahu bi ahkamil hakimin. Is Allah not the absolute judge and the absolute sovereignty? The absolute sovereign. So this is this is the and Allah is Hakim. Allah is the He is Hakim and He is Hakim. Hakim he is the ultimate sovereign. He is not questioned. La yusalu amma yafal wa hum yusalun. He will not be asked of what he does. Rather, we will be asked about what we did. And we are not in any position, right, to pass judgments. That this is why. Are you being the translator and the interpreter of the divine actions? Beware of this, brothers and sisters. We do this. Somebody is, is, is in an affliction. Or people were suffered some, from some difficulty. We become translators of the divine <laughs> actions. Who are you? Are you an angel? Are you a prophet? Well, are you claiming prophethood? That now you are becoming the voice, the, the spokesperson of God? We should be very careful in these matters. Rather, we should say, Subhanallah, just as Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal, in the 17th, 18th year of Hijrah, brothers and sisters, I want to share this very important incident that happened in, the, in, in Islamic history. In the 17th or 18th year of Hijrah, and he, after a couple of years, uh, after the Prophet والسلام, had passed away, very shortly, in lower Jordan, in a place called Amwas, there was a very severe plague that struck that area. 20 to 30,000 people passed away from that plague. From amongst the people who passed, passed away from the plague of Amwas, it was called Amwas, it was actually a Roman military base, which the Muslims had taken over. 
And in the time of Justinian, in the 6th century, there was a plague that came, and Imam Suyuti says it was actually the remnants of the previous plague that actually re-emerged. And which Sahaba got afflicted? There were 20 to 30 people, 30,000 who passed away approximately from this Ta'un, Ta'un Amwas. That was an area, the place was called Amwas. It was a recent, you know, Roman military uh, uh, base. And the Muslims had taken it over. And then the plague came. The people came to Ma'ad ibn Jabal, and I wanted to mention what happened. Waqa'at Ta'un Bisham, Fastagraqaha, Fakal al Nas, Mahada illa Tufan, illa Annahu Laysa Bima'in. The people started saying things. When the, when the plague hit, Sham, that lower area of, of the Levant, the people started saying, this is a flood, but only it is not with water. Other people said, inna hadha rijisun, wa rijizun, this is a punishment, and this is a filth. People started saying, who stood up to speak? Who stood up to speak? Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Do we know who is Mu'adh ibn Jabal? Mu'adh ibn Jabal is that companion which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Wallahi ya Mu'adh, inni la uhibbuk. Wallahi, O oh Mu'adh, I love you for the sake of Allah. Mu'adh ibn Jabal was the one the Prophet said about him, that a'lamu nasi bil halali wal haram Mu'adh ibn Jabal. The most knowledgeable in lawful and the unlawful, the faqih of this ummah, the jurist and the knowledgeable scholar of this ummah is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. What did he say? He stood up. And he says, إِنَّهُ قَدْ بَلَغَنِي مَا تَقُولُونَ It has reached me, what you are saying. Your gossip and your ignorant talk is reaching me. Some of you are saying, this is a filth, this is a punishment, this is like a flood except that it's not water. And fine, I mean, that's their worldly materialistic observation. But brothers and sisters, at these junctures, the scholars, the ulama, the people of faith, we must look at things from the lens of the akhirah, the lens of the unseen, the, re the lens of revelation. This is what the messengers came. This is what iman is for. This is what our religion is for, to see things other than the way that the kuffar and the munafiqeen are seeing things. What did he say? قَدْ بَلَغَنِي مَا تَقُولُونَ it has reached me what you are saying about this calamity. It's a natural disaster. It's a calamity. It's a sickness. It's a plague. 20 to 30,000 people died from it. Which Sahaba passed away from it? Uh, Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, Shurahbil ibn Hasana, and many other companions. Some of the companions who passed away from this plague were those who were Mubashirin bil Jannah, those who were promised paradise in the life of the Prophet. They passed away from this plague. So what did Mu'adh ibn Jabal say? He says, إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ رَحْمَةُ رَبِّكُمْ Oh my people, this is the mercy of your Lord. This is the mercy of your Lord. What? Plague? Sickness? Such a violent death? This is the mercy of your Lord? My dear brothers and sisters, Mu'alana Rumi Rahmatullahi mentioned something I wanted to share with you. Mu'alana Rumi Rahmatullahi in the Mathnawi, he said, somebody goes and sees the gardener in the garden. And he sees that he's sawing off the, the tree trunk like this. And he, if you just sees that quote-unquote violent act of sawing off the arm of that poor tree, or if somebody sees the doctor, the dentist, drilling into the tooth and ripping out somebody's rotten tooth, if you look at just that action in and of itself, you see, oh my God, this is such evil. This is such violence that's taking place. But he said, Marumi said, if you see that the gardener is purifying this garden, is beautifying this garden, he is making this garden to look flourishing. The, the dentist is actually taking out that tooth to save that person's mouth and to save that person's tooth from actually suffering, from more suffering. He said, then you would realize, and this is what our Lord does. He is our gardener. He cuts and he trims. And if we just look at that act, it can be very, very powerful. If we look at that incident and that quote-unquote tragedy, it can be very, very uh, scary. <laughs> but, you know, some people, you know, one person said, everybody want to go to paradise, nobody want to die. 
Everybody want paradise. Nobody want to die. So there's a way you have to go to paradise. There's a, there's a price that has to be paid for that. Sayyidina Mu'adh is saying, إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ رَحْمَةُ رَبِّكُمْ It is the mercy of your Lord. وَدَعْوَةُ نَبِيِّكُمْ And it is the dua of your messenger. وَمَوْتُ الصَّالِحِينَ قَبْلَكُمْ And this was the way that many of the righteous people had passed away in the past. So he says, وَلَكِنْ خَافُوا مَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْ ذَلِكْ Fear something that might be worse than this. And what can be worse than that? أَنْ يَغْدُوَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ مَنْزِلِهِ لَا يَدْرِي أَمُؤْمِنٌ هُوَ أَوْ مُنَافِقْ He says, you wake up in the morning and you don't know what is the condition of your iman. Are you a believer or are you a hypocrite? SubhanAllah. He said that the, 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 the tribulation of, of the faith is worse than the tribulation of the body. That if a person gets tested in their body and they die, they die shaheed, they go to Jannah. If a person is tested in their faith, they leave their faith, they die, they go to Jahannam. Which one is better? It's a no-brainer. So Sayyidina Mu'adh, he's saying this to remind us that هَذِهِ رَحْمَةُ رَبِّكُمْ These are manifestations of Allah's mercy for a believer because through it Allah purifies the believer. Through it Allah Ta'ala وَلَنَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَلَنَتَّخِذْ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء And we will take some martyrs from amongst you. From amongst you, we want to select some people. But to get there, it's, it's, it's a difficult journey. But once that, that journey, that slight suffering, that, that short suffering will be endless and everlasting enjoyment and everlasting pleasure of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Another reality of it is, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that my ummah, there is no punishment for my ummah in the, in the hereafter. Allah Ta'ala has not meant that Allah is going to punish this ummah in any way in the hereafter. Rather, this is, their, their tribulations will be in this life. The earthquakes and the tribulations and deaths that will occur. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentions مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ What can we do? This is a test for us, just as it's a test for our brothers and sisters in Turkey and in Syria, we are also being tested. What is the condition of your heart? Do you want to see the true sign of faith in your heart? Then listen to this hadith. مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحِمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسَدِ the example of the believers in their mutual love and their concern and their compassion for one another is like the example of one body. If one part of the body is in pain, then the entire body is complaining of fever and staying up all night. This is the example of the ummah. Our brothers and sisters who are suffering right now in Turkey and in Syria, we are being tested. How are we be being tested, right? In our compassion. How do we feel? How are we going out of our way? Subhanallah, to be there, at least making dua for them, at least making some charity for them. Our brothers from the Diyanat organization of Silicon Valley, mashallah, they are here, and they represent, uh, uh, you know, they're a large Turkish community, mashallah, and they're a charitable organization that's connected with the Turkish government, and mashallah, they are here, and how can we have that concern for our brothers and sisters? Share that pain with them. And manifest that, that, that mercy. I was listening to the radio a couple of years ago, and there was, I remember that time there was an earthquake in Haiti. So there was a lady, she calls up and she said, you know what, I, you know, I don't know about all this charitable, charity, charity, charity. I can't write a check every time there's some natural disaster in the world. I said, subhanAllah, this is, the, this is kufr. This is the reality of where there's godlessness, where you, don't, where you don't believe in something greater than yourself. Right? Those who believe in a power higher than themselves, they believe in the, in the, in the creator. Right? They will never say something like that. That's why it's very important, like, is your mind and your heart going close to that direction? That, oh man, here we go. Like, what do they have to do with me? They have nothing to do with me. I can't write a check or I can't, you know, give money every time something happens 10,000 miles away. Yeah, there's a flood in Pakistan and then there's an earthquake in Turkey and then there's some famine in Africa. I can't be involved in all of this. Absolutely you can. You can do it with your dua. Do you not want somebody to remember you in your suffering? 
Forget, forget religion. F put, put faith on the side. Just human, human courtesy. Where has that gone? That would you not want someone, the golden rule, treat others and deal with others as you would want others to deal with you? Wouldn't you want somebody that if you were in a suffering, in a calamity, if your family was stuck in a natural disaster, lost their homes, would you not want people to run, to have concern, to want to donate, to want to help you? So brothers and sisters, all of this, subhanAllah, is in the divine wisdom of Allah. If we look at all of this, within the divine wisdom of Allah, there are infinite amount of, we can never know the true divine wisdom behind anything. We can't say that. However, we can say that it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does nothing without, فَعْلُ hakim لَا يَخْلُوا عَنِ الْحِكْمَةِ The act of a wise man is not free from wisdom. How can that be then أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Then the most wise of those who, who give wisdom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. Our brothers are here from the Arat organization as well. And I wanted to make this as an announcement that more than anything else, they actually need medical supplies. I was very, you know, uh, interested that they focused on this point, that they're lacking medical supplies. So our brothers are actually standing there. Anybody who can, inshallah, uh, uh, contribute in that way, the more uh, urgent need right now that is out there definitely there are certain places we're doing clothes and blanket drives and you can ask them they have all the information they will be outside but more than anything they said that they are in need of medical supplies may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve the suffering of our brothers and sisters all over the world especially in Turkey and Syria but anywhere that the Muslims are suffering may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of those who have passed away the highest ranks in paradise and those amongst them that are living may Allah give them patience may Allah give them ajr for their suffering wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen